Today we have something extra special for you. We are going somewhere we have never gone before. Asia. You know Marina Bay Sands, Gardens by the Bay and the ban on chewing gum. But it also has some of the best service in the world. Welcome to Lion City, also known as Singapore. Singapore is a city-state in between Malaysia and Indonesia. It became independent in 1965 and went from a third world country to first in just one generation. Now it's one of the most prosperous countries in the world. It's also one of the cleanest and they want to keep it that way. Get caught littering and it's a fine of 930 euros. Get caught twice, it's double. In the south side, near Chinatown, we find our restaurant for today, Zen. It was opened by Swedish chef Bjorn Fransen. He made the move to fine dining and earned his stripes in London and Paris before coming home to open a Nordic slash Japanese fusion restaurant called Fransen. In 2010, he got two Michelin stars. And in 2018, he gets three. He brings the concept to Singapore and opens Zen, Fransen's sister restaurant. The name comes from two places, the Japanese culture and the last three letters from Fransen's name. The executive chef is Tristan Farmer. Born in Scotland, Tristan got his start in cooking as an apprentice in Fife, at the history beat in. From there, he went to London and worked for Gordon Ramsay. He cooked at Petrus, restaurant Gordon Ramsay and finally at Mays, where he had onto their one Michelin star as head chef for three years. Tristan joined the Francian group in 2018 as executive chef at Zen. He got his first two Michelin stars within one year of opening and the third in 2021. At the time of this video, Zen is number 21 on Asia's 50 best restaurant list. Walking around Singapore, you notice two things. The streets are spotless and tradition meets innovation everywhere you look. A lot of the buildings look European for good reason. The most popular designs during the colonial era were made by an architect from Ireland. We arrive at Zen. On the outside, Zen is very Zen. Clean and minimalist. A quick peek through the window shows the focus in the kitchen. When it's time, we ring the bell. It's a small detail that tells us we will be most welcome here. It feels like arriving to your friend's house. Great first impression. Inside, the music is pumping. Stronger by Kanye West is coming through the speakers. It's not background ambience. It's real music. Just like you might have at your place or a friend's place. Such a great opportunity to connect. The place looks homey in an elegant way, but my eyes are glued to the champagne bucket. There are four kinds of bubbles to choose from. One is a French Accorta aged 70 months. It's tempting, but I choose the 2008 Krug. Drinks in hand, we get a glimpse of what's in store for us. The ingredients for our meal on a bed of ice. I'm told they also do this at Franzen in Stockholm. What a cool idea. Choosing from the menu is easy. They have a 9 course tasting menu for 400 euro. That's it. For drinks, we can order from the drinks list or choose one of the pairings. There is a wine pairing for 240 euro, a mixed pairing with alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks for 200, and one with no booze at all for 175. We learn that our meal will be served in three rooms. First, we stay in the kitchen on the ground floor for five canapes. Then we go to the dining room upstairs for our main courses and finally to the living room on the top floor for desserts. It's a clever concept that keeps the friends and family vibe. The first canapé is a classic. It's a potato wafer filled with cream and spices. The ends are kept with roe and on top pickled shallots. I'm not a huge fan of roe. But this dish was perfectly crunchy, with the right amount of creaminess and just a hint of fish flavor. Excellent! This is a signature canapé, and another similarity between Zen and the restaurant Franzen. The music is another thing they have in common. Both restaurants use the same playlist with feel-good songs from the 50s through the 2010s with something for everyone, from hip-hop to classic rock. You can see the full playlist in the description. The service is lively and interactive. Some of the staff crouch to get down to Island. It shows the relaxed atmosphere 
they work to create. I tell the server that I really like the coaster under my water glass. He jokingly encourages me to steal it. This is the type of playful attitude I love. The next thing we know, the man himself, Chef Tristan, is sitting across from us. I love the personal connection and it's not fake or pushy. Tristan introduces canapé number two, tuna tatar on buckwheat, as well as number three, a flaky base with mango and sea buckthorn. Four is a puff pastry with sweet bread and long pepper under a nest of kombu. The canapé is finished with a sushi roll of pork and caviar. With each one, we see Japanese influence in terms of herbs and spices. It's all designed to wake up each flavor center of the tongue. It looks like a lot of food, but each one is light and airy. Then I jumped on a rare opportunity. I still have my glass of Krug 2008, but I see they have Krug from the year 2000 by the bottle. It's not every day I get the chance to compare vintages of Krug. It was very interesting for me to taste them side by side. I also take a 2008 Chardonnay from Corton Charlemagne. It has notes of fruit and oak and has a nice silky texture. Next, a detailed look at our ingredients. We find out where things are from and when they were harvested. Then we are moving upstairs to the dining room for our main courses. It's a warm, cozy, intimate space. Candles flickering and tables nicely prepared in Scandinavian style. The furniture is beautiful, the cutlery is elegant, and everything so far is perfect. There is a serving station at every table, so we know that the show is coming. The staff here in the dining room are bright and cheerful, laughing with guests and each other. The next court is Masu with wild trout roe. Masu is a really popular fish in Japan, so it's no surprise to see it here too. It has some sweet and spicy flavors and I like the pop of the road. It already feels like a top experience and we are barely over the first course. The second fish dish is brilliant. Nothing too dramatic, just simple and modern. Scallops, squid and clams finished at the table in ginger and black pepper oils. The presentation is just beautiful. Nice acidity and flavors. The menu so far has been a mix of Japanese and European with a Scandinavian touch. Suddenly, my water glass slips and we have a flood on our hands. In this chaos, the staff is calm. They are quick to fix the situation and all is forgotten. The brilliant general manager makes some jokes on me. It was fun. If this was a test, the Zen team passed with flying colors. Then, Chef Tristan is back. Our next course is Chavanmushi. It's a classic Japanese steamed custard with smoked oysters from Normandy topped with N25 caviar and nori oil. And with a tiny broom, he adds zest of sudachi. The custard is savory. It went well with the flavors of oyster and caviar. It's a balancing act of flavors, but they do it brilliantly. Next is onion soup. It's just three things. Onions, almonds and licorice. Making something exceptional from a few ingredients is one of the hardest things to pull off. This is amazing. It's buttery, sweet and nutty, and the acidity really elevates the flavors. My next wine is a 2014 Mandus Noir from France. It's an easy drinking red wine with strong fruity notes. We have the best seat in the house to watch a special wine opening. Port thongs were invented in the 18th century as a way to open bottles of vintage port with old corks that could not handle a corkscrew. First, heat the tongues red hot and place them the neck of a butter below the cork for a minute and a half. Then brush with cold water. The glass breaks cleanly due to the drastic change in temperature. Next, they can the wine through a filter and it's ready to drink. At our table, another show. The next course is prepared and served at our table. It starts with a base of kohlrabi and pea ragu. Then they grill some green caviar and add it to a brown butter and lemon juice reduction. They place some kinom leaves and then the grilled kinky fish from Hokkaido. I love the exotic flavors and different textures. Next, we must choose our weapon. 
For our next dish, we get to pick one of these custom-made knives from Morat. They have been making knives in Sweden for over a century. The lamb arrives. It's finished with lemongrass and lamb fat and served with savaya, a whipped emulsion of egg, oil and winjo. The lamb is cooked to perfection and absolutely delicious. But it was the sauce that steals the show for me. It's light and delicate, but also vibrant and acidic. Oh my god! Our final savory course is called French toast. It's sourdough bread dipped in batter, filled with onions and horseradish, and topped with double marinated Australian beef. I'm blown away. It's another multinational dish that really fits the culture here in Singapore. Our palate cleanser is a sorbet, made from Japanese cucumber, infused with sake, finished with a shisha flower. Very refreshing. My last wine is a lush and balanced Riesling from Germany's Mosel wine region. It's a fresh and aromatic dessert wine. Perfect match for the sweets to come. Our first dessert is poached rhubarb with lemongrass, vanilla and ginger. I see a lot of strawberry and rhubarb. But this one had an exciting sauce that I have never tasted before. It was very clean, light and smooth, but still, it stuck to the spoon like honey. The whole dish was magical, and the Japanese porcelain they served it in was just an extra special touch. We move upstairs to the living room for our last two courses. The first one is a taste of perfection. Japanese luxury food. Japan is known for having the world's most expensive and exquisite food. Farmers pay special attention to each and every plant, cultivating each piece of fruit by hand. For this reason, it comes with a price tag. A single Miyazaki mango sells for 50 euro, and I get to try it here at Zen, along with kumquat and muskmelon. They are simply amazing. The waffle party is buckwheat waffles with banana cream, whipped honey and ulan mousse. They are light and fluffy and delicious. To finish, we have our choice of premium Austrian brandy as a digestive. It's almost time to say goodbye. Coming down to the ground floor is like coming back down to earth. I get one final shot of Tristan and the kitchen staff. Such genuinely kind people. This crew was an unforgettable part of a wonderful experience. They deserve every praise. I'm so grateful to them for having me. This was such a night. Thank you for joining me. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button. See you next time.